Welcome back. Of course, we've been watching the breaking news from the Israel-Gaza border throughout this hour. And here at home, the Senate voted today to confirm three top-level military promotions after nominations, as you've likely heard, were held up for months by Alabama's Republican Senator Tommy Tuberville over military policy on abortions. Tensions between Tuberville and his Senate colleagues have really boiled over in the last 24 hours. Lawmakers on both sides getting frustrated, even furious that Tuberville refuses to change his position, even amid the war between Israel and Hamas. Patience is wearing thin on both sides of the aisle over the senator's antics. No matter where you believe it or not, Senator Tuberville, this is doing great damage to our military. I don't say that lightly. I've been trying to work with you for nine months. I really respect men of their word. I do not respect men who do not honor their word. We're going to look back at this episode and just be stunned at what a national security suicide mission this became. Joined now by our panel, Daniela Diaz, the congressional reporter for Politico, Svante Myrick, former mayor of Ithaca, New York, and current president and CEO of People for the American Way, and Sarah Chamberlain, president and CEO of Republican Main Street Partnership. All right, team, it's closing in on the end of the hour, so we're going to go around, around quickly on this. What does it say, Daniela, that Tommy Tuberville has somehow managed to upset both Republicans and Democrats within the last 24 hours? They were teeing off. And it's been bubbling for months. Democrats from the very beginning didn't like that. Senator Tuberville took the stance. Republicans privately were saying that they didn't like that he did this, but this is the first time that we're seeing them actually publicly come out and do something about it. They are fed up by the fact that there are lots of nominations that have not been fulfilled, and they decided to do something on this, and possibly there could be a rules change, temporary, they want to make very clear, to stop Tuberville from doing this, because he's not backing down, even though his colleagues are upset. Sarah, it has put some Republicans in a challenging position right now. Lindsey Graham really said, hey, you are not making America safe right now. If you were allowed to do this, Democrats could do something when the tide turns in the future here. This is a dangerous precedent, they argue. Absolutely. They f and they forced him against the wall, and he still didn't give up. Um, but I'm glad they went around him and got three confirmed today. We have to move forward. And it's a shame he's doing this. And it's really out. I mean, abortion. And we're at war now. The, co the world is at war. We just saw that. He, sh he should not be holding up for abortion. He can, he can fight that fight another day. Svante, let me ask you if I can really quickly. Right now, as we've been speaking, we're anticipating that vote yeah. from House Republicans, mm -hmm. or they have by all members of the House, but the Republicans. Mm -hmm. Speaker Mike Johnson has put it out there right now that Israel would be a standalone bill with some cuts to the IRS as part of the Inflation Reduction Act passed by President mm -hmm. Biden in the first two years of his term right now. Some Democrats are saying, hey, I got to vote for this because I got to be on the side of voting for Israel, even if I disagree with the the way in which this is happening. Yeah. I think most won't. And it does seem, unfortunately, like the Republican Party just can't get out of its own way. You know, one toxic maneuver after another, not just for the country, but I mean politically. And I think that's why Republicans are upset with Tuberville. They know that if uh, you combine weakening the military with supporting a supporting a national abortion ban. That's about the worst thing you could do politically. The same thing uh, with this push to say, OK, we'll only support Israel if we can also allow people to cheat on their taxes. Really bad politically. And it's not even going to work. The Senate and the White House is going to override yeah, it. Yeah, dead on anyway. arrival in the Senate that yeah. we've heard from the White House that they plan to veto this. So Sarah, let me ask you about that right now, right? Because it seems like the Republicans, there are certainly some more hawkish Republicans who are like supporting Ukraine, which is to say fighting Putin, should be a no-brainer for the party right now. I know American support for Ukraine is waning at this time, right? But as many Republicans, Lindsey Graham among them, have said, hey, if you let Putin do it there, what are you saying to President Xi in China vis-a-vis -vis Taiwan? So we have a lot of Republicans, Republican Main Street Partnership, that are supporting the money for Ukraine and Israel. Do not like the fact it's tied, um, Israel's tied to the IRS funding, um, but they plan on voting for it because they think Israel needs funding. So where is the pressure point? When does this break? I have no idea. You tell me. I have well, no idea. So, Danielle, let been... me ask you right now, how does this break? Because as I'm at the White House talking to sources right now, Israel, you know, they get $3 billion from the United States. Ukraine, though, they're, the money they're getting, the flow, and the attention certainly isn't right there, though, without the continued munitions coming in from the United States and from, from other partners, they could get rolled over 
by Russia. There's a real concern that the window is closing there in particular. Well, and we're seeing Re House Republicans use the Ukraine funding as leverage to get border funding, right. border policy change. Now they're saying, uh, Speaker Mike Johnson said that last night, that he wants to intertwine those two issues to have leverage over Democrats to get them to support the border changes because that's what Republicans say is their priority. So it's all a mesh of issues that's becoming intertwined that a lot of these members on both sides don't want to see together. So let me ask you if I can right now, obviously, we're talking presidential politics a bit too here on NBC next week. We're going to have another debate for these challengers, mm -hmm. Sarah, to Donald Trump right now. He's not going to show up for the third straight debate. He still has double digit, maybe 40 point plus leads over his Republican challengers right now. Is, is this a driving issue? Is this a wedge issue in any way? The issue of Ukraine among Republicans? Or are they all united in their belief system basically that, hey, we're not as concerned about Ukraine right now? So they're not. So Ukraine is an important issue. But I think what we just saw, Israel, I think, is going to become the most important issue and we may get tied into a war the way this is going and I think it will really affect next year's presidential elections. Let me ask you Donald uh, we've heard President Biden he has a new challenger right now Democrats privately you know the president may not talk about Dean Phillips by name he was notably in his district mm -hmm. yesterday but Dean Phillips the concern among some Democrats right now Svante is that they say this guy who doesn't have a chance of winning yeah. is only amplifying concerns that voters may have about the president's age right now. In spite of his years of service, he is obviously more senior. Does that concern you, and should Democrats be upset by that? Well, I, Biden, President Biden has proven to be remarkably resilient. He's tackled all sorts of comers in the last election who said he was too old. Cornell West, RFK, now Dean Phillips. I think none of them will truly stand in his way towards the nomination. He's got all eyes on November, yeah. where voters will be looking for competence and control. And i got to be honest, the Republican Party is demonstrating anything but. And global headwinds that are tumultuous, everything that they touch seems chaotic. So right let me now. follow up with one quick question on that. Our teams were in Michigan this week. Mm -hmm. There's a large Arab American population there. Many in the Arab American community, which has voted Democratic largely in the past, are saying, hey, we may sit this out. We may not. We may even vote Republican. One Arab American, Palestinian American, yeah. told us right now, that's in the state of Michigan. Yeah. Democrats can't afford to lose the state of Michigan. We need Michigan. We need young people. And we need all people of good conscience. So President Biden certainly has work to do there. So what do you say to progressives right now who have been, who have been many cases, yeah. protesting in the streets? I think part of it is the president needs to listen to those folks. But also, uh, they need to judge him, as he often says, against the alternative and not the almighty, where President Trump and his first act was a Muslim ban, where his uh, provocations in the Middle East have only inflamed tensions. Yeah. And I think President Biden has a story to tell. You may not love everything he's done in this crisis, but would the alternative truly make it Judge better Judge me against the alternative, not against the almighty. It sounds like you've been covering the White House beat for a while, like I have. We hear that all the time. Sarah, Svante, Danielle, I appreciate all you guys making time to be with us as we've watched this breaking news. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.